So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast's videos, also a longtime friend of Mr. Beast, recently came out as gender nonconforming. And the response from Chris's friends, all part of Mr. Beast's videos, including Mr. Beast himself, was incredibly wholesome. They all showered Chris with love and adoration and said that they support them throughout this journey unconditionally. And it was just a very human thing to see. Right wingers, of course, took issue with that. And it has led to a bunch of videos being posted by transphobes where they sort of try to concern troll over Chris and about the impact that their trans identity is going to have on Mr. Beast. Let me give you one example of that. So YouTuber Relalyn tweeted out about Sunny V2 and a video that they posted where they basically just weirdly concern troll over Chris Tyson coming out as trans, arguing Chris will soon be a nightmare for Mr. Beast because the argument is that it'll cost Mr. Beast financially due to a lack of support because transphobes won't want to watch the video. The video itself was dog shit. I didn't watch the whole thing, but it was bad. Now, in response to this, Relevant writes, this new Sunny V2 video really feels invasive for all the wrong reasons. Like, why did you make this? You delved into the man's marriage and shit. It just really is off-putting and unnecessary. Now, this actually prompted Mr. Beast's response saying, yeah, this is getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare. He's my fucking friend and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. And that's just one of many examples. If you log on to TikTok, there's bizarre videos uh, where people are trying to overanalyze the interactions between Mr. Beast and Chris. And they're trying to make it seem as if Chris is making Mr. Beast feel uncomfortable by sitting too closely to him. It's just very weird. Like you can tell that these transphobes are trying to pit Chris against Mr. Beast, but these two individuals individuals are longtime friends and to try to drive them apart really shows how deranged and obsessed transphobes are but notice something mr beast he hasn't suddenly changed his content and become some vocal trans activist with his youtube account like he's not using his massive youtube channel to say hey everyone you should support trans rights he's simply being a normal person by saying i support my trans friend but even that is too far for bigots because to remain pure in their eyes, really what Mr. Beast has to do is unequivocally reject his friend despite their years of friendship. And um, since Mr. Beast is not doing that, well, right-wingers are melting down. Ali London, for example, claimed it was wrong to call YouTubers concerned trolling about Chris transphobic, uh, but it's not wrong. It's accurate, and these YouTubers and these content creators who are trying to profit off of this are talking about really personal family issues with Chris that they're not privy to. Like, they're not privy to the reason why Chris got a divorce. They don't know about these things, but they're speculating because they're trying to drive transphobia. Now, also, Elijah Schaefer disingenuously claims that Mr. Beast misgendered Chris, but Chris has not designated new pronouns, and currently they claim that they go by any and all pronouns. But you can see how they're really trying to pit Mr. Beast against his friend here. Now, also, right wing fuckface Steven Crowder dedicated an entire live stream to Mr. Beast's response, accusing him of shoving the trans agenda on children. And chief transphobe himself, Matt Walsh, accused Mr. Beast of selling out to the quote trans cult. So you can see that they're not taken kindly to Mr. Beast not denouncing his own friend, but it's a little bit ironic that a Christian nationalist like Matt Walsh would accuse everyone else of being in a cult. But I want to remind you again that all of this hysteria is based on him simply remaining friends with someone who came out as trans. That's why they're so upset. Now, let's watch a little bit of Matt Walsh's video just so you get a sense of how obsessed and deranged these fucking freaks are. And now that he's gone down this road, there's really no coming back. You can expect much more pro-trans content from Mr. Beast going forward, which means that if you're a parent and you allow your child to watch Mr. Beast videos, now is a very good time to stop allowing that. We, we could probably assume that Mr. Beast would prefer not to have to deal with this, but Tyson has forced him to make a choice, and, uh, and he chose, and he chose wrong. This is really the common thread. Tyson is forcing this onto people who are close to him. Transitioning is wrong always and every time. Uh, first, because it's impossible. You, you cannot transition from one sex to the other. But even if we lived in the sort of science fiction universe where such a thing was possible, it would still be wrong to do it when you're married and you have a child. 
Like if I believed in the reality of transitioning, I would still say that by the time you get married and conceive a child, the transition ship has sailed. It is your responsibility now, it's your obligation to suppress that part of you and live as the man that your wife and child need you to be. Oh, well, how reasonable of him. Just suppress it and be miserable for the rest of your life. Presumably like Matt Walsh, whose obsession with trans people is merely a coincidence, I'm sure. These people are genuinely unhinged. And it's just, it's shocking to me that a video like that can get half a million views with people overwhelmingly agreeing that, yeah, everything that he's saying here is perfectly reasonable. Now, notice how he is explicitly calling on parents to not let their kids watch Mr. Beast, specifically because Chris is trans. And a trans person being in a video, well, that makes it inherently political and in your face. But the simple inclusion of a trans person that doesn't make it political or even pro-trans. Trans people exist. So to have them in a video, apparently, according to Matt Walsh, that just automatically taints it. It taints Mr. Beast's entire channel. See, these right-wingers aren't outraged by specific trans people or vocal trans activists. It's trans existence that bothers them, full stop. And they're giving away the game here increasingly. They're saying the quiet part loud more frequently now. So think about how quickly things have escalated. Right-wingers first argue that they're not necessarily transphobic. Trans people should be free to live however they want. They simply just don't want gender ideology to be pushed on, pushed on their children. And that's where they take issue with trans people. But now they're just admitting, mm, actually, we don't like trans people. We think that being trans is inherently wrong and we need to eradicate transgender people. Oops, I mean eradicate transgenderism. We definitely don't mean genocide though. See, this is where we're at. And people like Matt Walsh have huge audiences and they're setting the agenda. So much so that Republican legislators and attorneys generals are listening. Vice reports, Missouri is the first state to severely restrict gender affirming care for transgender adults amid a nationwide GOP led push to legislate away trans rights. The state's attorney general, Andrew Bailey, announced an emergency regulation on Thursday that aims to limit access to gender affirming care for Missourians by setting sweeping new rules for those seeking treatment. Quote, I will always fight to protect children because gender transition interventions are experimental, Bailey said in a statement. Science actually supports gender affirming care and it's not experimental. Now, let's just pause right there. That is how these things should be reported on. Vice News is correct to just lay out the facts. But understand that this attorney general, as he is announcing a ban on gender affirming care for adults, he's still citing children as his motivator. See, this is why many of us said that the whole think of the children argument was disingenuous from the start. They were hiding the ball. But as they literally now do the unthinkable, they still cloak their rhetoric in disingenuous concern trolling over children. But why? You're already just doing what you've been wanting to do. So why lie? Why gaslight us at this point? We know that you don't want trans people to exist, and this is you trying to eliminate trans people from existence. I mean, I don't have to tell you all, because my audience knows, this is going to kill trans people in Missouri. Because we're talking about an effective total ban on gender-affirming care that is for, again, adults. Vice continues, the emergency rule makes it impossible for transgender people of all ages to access gender-affirming care unless they have exhibited a medically documented, quote, long-lasting, persistent, and intense pattern of gender dysphoria for three years. They also have to prove they've received a full psychological or psychiatric assessment and 15 separate hourly sessions of therapy, at least 10 of which must be with the same therapist. This follows several anti-trans lobbyists and lawmakers who've attempted to falsely equate transness with severe mental illness. People seeking such care will have to be screened for autism and other pre-existing issues such as anxiety and depression. And pre-existing conditions must, quote, have been treated and resolved before a person can access gender affirmation 
life-affirming care. Healthcare providers also have to check that a minor who is trans has received a comprehensive screening annually and isn't suffering from social media addiction. Care is also prohibited if healthcare workers don't check yearly whether a patient is experiencing social contagion with respect to the patient's gender identity. This is likely based on yet another GOP spread myth that transness is a trend or a craze. So this is an effective ban on gender affirming care for everyone in the state of Missouri. And sure, they're going to cite the exceptions to make it sound as if they are reasonable, but there's a plethora of caveats and stipulations that give them the ability to deny gender affirming care to anyone, even if they theoretically qualify, including adults who should be able to make this decision for themselves. Now, this goes into effect on April 27th and will rem remain in effect until 2024. So, like, I feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but this is obviously them trying to eliminate trans people from existence. We're not just talking about a mere inconvenience for trans people here. We're talking about a policy that is literally going to kill trans people. But this was always the goal. It's not like that's going to deter them once they find out that denying gender affirming care to trans people increases suicidal ideation. That's their goal. So understand that Mr. Beast doesn't have to change anything about his content to become their enemy. The fact that he didn't reject his friend for being trans makes him inherently evil according to these deranged right-wingers because their goal is the complete and total elimination of trans people by any means necessary. And simply having a trans friend is antithetical to that genocidal goal, which is why they're targeting Mr. Beast and going against him so vociferously. And what they're going to do, I'm, ass I'm assuming, is they're going to continue to try to bully Mr. Beast until he gives into the mob and not only removes Chris from his videos, but repudiates transgenderism that he tried to push. But Mr. Beast, given, you know, what we've seen with his initial response, he's going to continue to be an unconditional friend to Chris because they've been friends for a very long time, regardless of, you know, whether or not Chris is trans or not. And that's not going to change anytime soon. So it seems like right wingers chose the wrong YouTuber to fuck with because Mr. Beast has a far larger platform than any of these ghouls. And so if they really want to provoke Mr. Beast into becoming a real trans ally, well, they're going to end up inadvertently goading him into doing that. Because if you continue to poke the beast, well, then he might actually just come out and say, yeah, trans rights are human rights. And here's my video about that as well to my millions and millions of fans.